Hey everyone, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. My name is Justin, and it sounds like Matt Murray is pretty much set in stone going to be coming to Toronto. So with the rumors picking up and the deal set to come through, probably in the next day, I would guess, want to hop on here and give my first few thoughts about it. With the rumors picking up every single day, it sounds like they're getting closer and closer to a deal. And well, the reaction is majority the same. People are very negative about this idea of Matt Murray getting picked up by Toronto. I wanted to give my thoughts on this because in my last video, I said, you know, I'm in the same boat. I don't want the Leafs going after Matt Murray. I definitely don't want him as a starter. And it didn't make much sense to me as having him as a backup. For me, I like having a younger player, a prospect, someone you want to develop as a backup. I think that's a better use of the role. But that was until I saw on draft day, the Ottawa Senators had a deal in place to send Matt Murray at 50% retained and the seventh overall pick to the Buffalo Sabres in exchange for another pick lower in the draft. That would have been a steal for the Buffalo Sabres, picking up a 50% retained Matt Murray and the seventh overall pick, but Matt Murray turned it down. And so then the conversation started. Well, Matt Murray would accept a deal to Toronto. Let's talk there. The Leafs are interested, and I can see why. If Ottawa was prepared to give up that seventh overall pick, what could the Leafs get in a deal? Of course, the Ottawa Senators did end up using that seventh overall pick along with a couple other picks in that draft to pick up a very, very underrated player in Alex Dabrinkit, so good on them for doing that. But again, it brings this conversation that they are desperate. The Ottawa Senators are desperate to get rid of Matt Murray's contract, which I don't fully understand why. I don't think that they're really ready there yet to be fully competing. Uh, they're going to be a much better team next year, but they've got lots of cap space. They can afford to hold on to him for another year, even if it's as a backup, especially if they're going to be taking 50% retained. But that puts all the leverage for the Toronto Maple Leafs. And Dubas is not stupid. I know a lot of you watching this are not supporters, not fans of Dubas. I personally am because I think he makes very, very intelligent moves. And he knows all the leverage is in Toronto Maple Leafs favor. And it's the same thing when the Leafs had to get rid of a contract in the likes of Nikita, uh, Nikita Zaitsev, they had to give up Connor Brown as part of that deal. Well, now, the tables are flipped. It's Matt Murray potentially coming to Toronto at at least 50% retained. We know that's going to be a factor, but what else is going to be in this trade? And that's the big thing. We cannot judge a Matt Murray to Toronto trade until we know the full deal. If Matt Murray comes to Toronto and they throw in someone like Shane Pinto or Alex Formanton or Connor Brown, or if any of those players are 50% retained, or what if we were to send Justin Hall the other way? That is a win for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, I would not be happy with Matt Murray as our starter. I think he had a couple great years in Pittsburgh. They obviously decided to stick with him over Flurry in the expansion draft. He won a couple cups, had some really good hockey. Since then, has not played very well. And I'll be the first to admit that. So would I trust him as a starting goalie? No. Would I trust him as a backup? Yeah, he's got good hockey in him, and he's very capable of putting up 20 games in the NHL and stepping up when you need him to if your starter goes down an injury. And at $3 million, it's not the biggest deal. That actually saves you $800,000 on what Peter Morazic's contract was. And people are going to say, okay, you get rid of $3.8 million in Morazic just to pick up $3 million in Murray. That's not the point. You're not doing it to pick up a $3 million Matt Murray. You're doing it to pick up Matt Murray at $3 million plus whatever else is going to be a part of this deal. Now, if the Toronto Maple Leafs end up trading for Matt Murray and it's the only piece in this deal, I'm not going to be a fan of it. I, I just, I don't see a deal where I could possibly accept that Matt Murray is coming here and that's the only piece. But if Again, we get the likes of a Connor Brown, someone that can hop in your top six that already has meshed with your players that you never wanted to get rid of in the first place. He was only a throw-in in that Zaitsev deal. Or if you can get someone like Pinto or Formanton or anybody else, Eric Brandstrom on the back end, a young, solid, uh, prospective piece with a lot of upside or a lot of growth to show. Well, that's a win because those are players that you're going to have to pick up either through your system, through the draft, 
through a trade somewhere else, through free agency. Those are players that you need in your roster, especially the Leafs this year who need those younger guys who have a place, especially in the bottom six of the Leafs forward group at a young, cheap price. So if we get Matt Murray at $3 million, we save $800,000 on Peter Mrazek and we get a solid piece in return. And if you get rid of someone like Justin Hull in that deal, that drops $2 million off of your cap hit as well. But I will state this again. Matt Murray should not be the starter. I would not trust the Leafs goaltending with Murray as a starter. So you would still need to look at continuing conversations with Jack Campbell, which it sounds like they're not close at all. Or you can look at Darcy Kemper, but he's probably going to demand a decent a chunk of change considering he just won the Stanley Cup as the starting goalie. Who else is on the market? Not a whole lot. I think Sam Sonov might be available, but at the end of the day, it's going to be slim pickings and there's going to be a few teams that are looking at the goalie market and the Leafs need to be able to shore someone else as the starter. Perhaps that's a trade for John Gibson. I know Gibson and his agent have said that he's not interested in coming to Toronto. Who knows the truth to that? Maybe it's just them playing the media a little bit to get a little bit more uh, for Anaheim in that deal. But as long as Dubas is going for another starting goalie, Matt Murray, again, as a backup, I don't have an issue with it. I still hold my idea that the backup goalie should be a younger prospect that you're looking to develop. Again, Wool, uh, Ian Scott, uh, Eric Schalgren, those are all pieces that I would be happy with being the backup, but that's not the point of the trade. The point of the trade is to get much more than just Matt Murray. So at the end of the day, let's wait until it comes through. Even if it does come through, there's still the slim chance that it doesn't, but it sounds like they're very, very close. Very close to me. Sounds like Kyle Dubas is just asking for that one extra piece. It's not Ottawa. Ottawa's not asking for any more. Ottawa's the one that's desperate to get rid of Matt Murray here. It's Toronto asking for that extra piece. What is it? What is that piece that's going to put them over the edge? Maybe it's something that would be an absolute steal that we're looking at Dubas as this miracle worker. How did he make this happen? So let's wait for the trade to come through and then we'll judge it and I'll make a video after that and give my final thoughts. What are your thoughts? Do you want Matt Murray? Do you think it's a stupid deal? What would you want to see included in the Matt Murray deal for you to think it's a good one? And time will tell. I'll see you in the next one.